You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another beautiful episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paolo. <laughs> Sometimes I can just tell that's coming. That's my but, Sicario one, because I normally say Pablo. No, yeah. it's Pablo. Is that like the tougher version? Yeah, the that's scarier, like the don't F with me version. Evil. Sicario <laughs> version. Right, yes, right. Yes. Which well, I, I did feel an innate closest to, because I shot that movie here in Albuquerque, and I'm like, oh, look, there's the Sandias. Oh, look, there's the Manzanos. Oh, look. <laughs> I love that. It's actually very cool being from a place where they film a lot of movies and shows. True. And just makes those shows more interesting. But, And I love that you described this particular show as beautiful. I'm... <laughs> I'm curious to see what hey, is after, beautiful about after it. After reading this, this long, long email, I know you can't uh, listen on iTunes to how long the email is, but it is single space, two pages. And if you're on YouTube, here it is. So you can see it. It's very, very not succinct. <laughs> no, but that's okay. It's that's not uh, wasted words either. No, I no, no. Think. So, no, Mark, we're not. talking about your email, and we really do appreciate all your feedback and, uh, yeah, your honesty and your appreciations, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I really appreciate you. So I'm only going to read two small paragraphs out of this, but um, there was one little point that he talked about in the recent podcast that we did where he we answered his question about uh, mapping pricing. Right. And, uh, he's, you know, he pretty much said that we were spot on the whole way through, that it is about 20%, you know, capture time. 80%, you know, processing time. And when you're planning for pricing your mapping jobs, you got to consider that. But he said, first, thank you for the very careful and detailed responses to my emails. I feel like I just got about $500 of personalized business consulting for free. See, Rob, you are valuable. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Perhaps you need to review about podcast pricing. Seriously, thank you so much for your detailed and thoughtful discussions on it. Paul, you have so much experience and knowledge of Bottomless Well. And Rob, you are a gracious host and commentator. I felt like you were talking to me personally over coffee. Which I would enjoy. I listened to this podcast three times and forced my wife to listen once just because it was so valuable and personal. <laughs> I love that forced. My <laughs> wife. I wonder what that looked like. <laughs> Get over here and listen to this. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't well, think that's Hopefully it wasn't Mark. too strong of a force. But anyways. <laughs> Turns the power off. Get in the car. Right. Listen to exactly. the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, but that would be funny. Um, all right, the last thing I was going to read. Everyone should go to the mapping class. I would highly recommend this to anyone exploring mapping. Yes, I was moved back a grade due to the equipment and preparation and lack of following directions, but I shall be all the better for it. Paul, thank you for understanding and not taking this as a comment on you or the class. You or your team do great work. I also like your ideas about adding an extra day with focus on business deliverables and pricing. I also suggest allowing everyone to get hands-on experience like Johnny Spiva did with the Leica GPC measurement system so they can see what is involved on the capture part and know how they can do it in the future. That like, wouldn't be hard to add that. I think in the that's class. a big piece right there. And we could add that in a Saturday's class. That's fine. Yeah. So, all right, let's make a decision. Are you ready? We're gonna You're going to ask for that ad that, third, that fourth add, day. No, it won't. It's really a fourth day. It would be a fourth day. Yeah. Well, let's put it on the... Okay, let's do two executive decisions really quick. Okay. okay. Executive decision number one, add fourth day to the mapping class just to go over deliverables and pricing. Okay. And number... <laughs> We're having a meeting on the podcast. Right? <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this. Number two, um, let's do an executive decision to Saturday add GCPs, uh, how to do them. Because we talk about GCP placement, how to make GCPs. We don't talk about survey grade equipment and how to use it. Um, now that we're familiar, okay, thanks so to Eric Evans at Holman's, uh, we could do that. Let, so. so let's hit number two first. I think that one's easier. I think. Uh, so operationally, is that practical? I mean, I love the idea. The more hands-on that we can give people that come to the trainings, the better, right? So conceptually, it's and, a no-brainer. I think pricing and deliverables is something that people really care about because once they deep dive into the software and they realize everything you can do with it, then they're like, wow, okay, let's bring that back down to the micro level and say, what do we deliver for this job? What do we deliver for this job? What about this job? And I think 
part of that would be even using Pix4D model because a lot of people love using Eagle View because it works a lot like Pix4D model where you can click a pixel and then it pulls up that image and you can blow up the image and then look at it at a very fine detail and people really like that. Yeah. That's something that we could show. Okay. So GCP's on Saturday. Saturday we'll just add that executive decision. Let's shake on it. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> okay. Okay. We just shook. Yeah. Again, so I'm just making sure that that's practical. To, to add an hour yeah. for GCPs? Well, we typically end at four anyway. Well, but to give everybody hands-on, because that's what he's talking about, is mm. give everybody hands-on. Is that actually doable? Um, Maybe if we had like a... Mm, yeah, there's a lot of logistical support needed. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyways, okay. As for the final day, I'd, uh, so I don't think we should do that on this one. I think that it's you know 20 days away. It's a little bit quick. This is how we operate sometimes. I don't think we should do that now. But if you want to extend Sunday and just add a, and a couple hours to it, I think that would actually be fantastic. That but would that's make easy for me to Sunday say. a 12-hour long day. I understand. And people are already, like, exhausted by, like, 3 o'clock. Well, right. But at this point, people have already signed up, and they're probably going home Sunday night, and they've got plans made, et cetera. So... I think for the future, it's probably something that we'll add, and it would cost a little bit extra, right? Is that the thinking yeah. there? I don't know what it would cost extra, but I think it's something that's very, very important. So. Right. So anyways, and we can talk more about that. So we actually did not make an executive decision unless the decision is, I don't think we should do it this time. It's just too close. It is. Let us know what you think. Go to Drone U Community and tell us what you think after you listen to this show. I'd like to, like to hear. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, today's question, since we just rambled for 10 minutes. <laughs> Apologies. Well... Look, guys, when you hear from other people about the things that make DroneU different, it really makes us happy and grateful. And we like to share those because it makes us feel like we're doing the right thing for you guys. Yeah, we want to give you the confidence also that you can trust in DroneU. Right. And yes. that's a big part of it. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. We're going to go ahead and just jump into the question. Hey, Paul. Hey, Rob. My name is Adam. Uh, I got my 107 certificate about a week ago. Still have never flown a drone. But uh, just kind of waiting to see what endeavors I want to really get into. I uh, work on a military installation. I deal with um, some of their aviation units. And was curious if anyone has ever uh, had an authorization to fly on a military installation to do a uh, model or map uh, anything there. And if it is just getting in contact with their ATC if that's all it takes, then that's easy for me, but not sure if I could use that for a benefit. And if renting that approval for that airspace, uh, how that would go if I was able to achieve that authorization. Anyway, uh, I appreciate what you guys do. Keep it up. And uh, I'll probably ask 10 more questions this week. Thank you. Cool, Adam. Thank you. Two questions in a row. Appreciate it very, very much. We do appreciate it. So the question, I thought we had gone over this um, previously, but ha has anyone ever gotten permission to fly over a military base? Military bases typically can have airspaces just outside of the base itself as well. Um, good example is in San Antonio. Uh, recently, I had to do a job in that airspace and called the regional command for the airspace or aviation director and kind of bounced around the phone for a little while, maybe for about like uh, just a couple minutes till I finally was asking for a UAS director on the aviation side. Now there is a UAS director at this mm. particular base and you may actually find that that exists at other bases as well, but I'm sure it's probably not all just yet. Now that being said, when I called the UAS director to ask him, I said, hey, my name is Paul Aiken, certificate number 39, blah, 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 and I'm looking to fly at this particular CVS. This is the area around the CVS I want to fly. This is the elevation I want to fly, and I want to do it Thursday from 8 a.m. to noon. Can you do that? And he was like, yeah, it checks. You know, what would you say, 150 feet? Yeah. From when? Let's add a couple hours. And he's like, and just call me when you're done with the operation. Really? Yeah. And like literally sent me, I was like, well, can you send me an email confirmation of you giving me, a, you know, orders for that? And, you know, he did. He spelled my name wrong. So I knew, uh, I knew instantly if the police came to question me how to spell my name the wrong way. <laughs> A-I-G-K-E-N, never saw that before. But uh, it was very easy, very seamless. After 15 minutes on the phone, he gave me permission 
And it's so funny. It just goes to show that systems with UAS are still so new. When I called back um, at the aviation office uh, to say, all right, I've done, I'm done with my mission. You know, I just wanted to let you guys know. The guy was like, did you have permission to do that? I'm like, yes, I talked to Colonel Poop. And, you know, like I had permission. I'm just calling you to tell you I'm done. Which he asked me to do. Which he asked me yeah. to do. He was like, oh, okay. He's like, whoa, well, thanks for calling. We actually appreciate that. Yeah. So, like, he, he instantly, you know, went like, wait a minute, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. To like, oh, oh, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, like, just so confusion. That's interesting because it, it sounds like that particular instance went very, very well for you. It did go very well. It was but surprisingly it, easy. Yeah. But that's not always going to be the case. Uh, well, like with all humans, there typically are differences between us. In... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My point is, if it doesn't go that well, what would be step two? Donuts and coffee on a Monday or Tuesday morning at his office. Yeah, and one of the things that I like to do, I mean, if you're calling any organization and you're trying to get an answer, you're trying to get a yes, right? And you keep getting no's. I typically just keep calling back until I get somebody to give me the yes that I want. But in this particular case, you're going to, for a period of time, you're just going to keep getting the same person. So that doesn't really work. Right. True. So I don't know if there's anything else that you can do other than it, it's a lot about relationships. I continually see how often Vic continues <sighs> to get these big time authorizations to fly. Oh, yeah. Well, the one at DFW off the runway. I was like, we should do a show about that because yeah. we need to set a precedent that it's not just the special people who care about the industry that are getting authorizations. We need to showcase to people how you got this authorization because this is the second authorization off the runway of an airport. Now, he's working for a particular company that's building near airports for a specific reason I can't go into. But that's not important. What's important is understanding how to work with these people to get what you want because they are exactly. sanctioned by the federal government to get people flying in a safe manner. That's their damn job. And a lot of people know it. And when you – here's the thing, right? Life lesson here, ladies and gentlemen, do you think someone is going to want to help you if you're not prepared to have them help you? Now, does that, does that make sense? Probably not. But when you go into DMV or we have a private entity here in New Mexico, which growing up in Virginia, there's no private DMV. The government takes care of it and that's it. Well, yeah, it, it hasn't always been here and it's kind of, it's worth the 35 bucks. It, I paid a lot more than $35, but it is totally worth it because of the incompetence of a lot of the employees at DMV. Um, now, if you work at DMV, I'm sorry, but you're... You can do a better job. Anyway, long story short. Um, <laughs> Oops. Not everyone at DMV sucks. We all know this, okay? Definitely not. Um, but anyway, MVD, if I don't have my driver's license, my proof of insurance, um, sometimes you have to have your passport with you in New Mexico because we're, uh, what is it called, a sanctuary state or something like that? Our, our IDs are not recognized as federal. They are now. They are now, they but are they now. weren't. No, they that's were. true. So you had to that's do true. like an extra. Very recently. Yeah, you had to do like an extra form of ID. Anyway. <laughs> Is someone going to want to help me at DMV if I don't have all that stuff ready to go? Probably not. So when you call this UAS director on base, you need to show him through actions that you have your stuff together. Because if you don't have your stuff together, it's going to be really easy for him to be like, this dude doesn't even know a certificate number. Like, why am I going to give him access in a controlled airspace that's very dangerous? Right. So when you call... You need to have your certificate number. You need to have the dates and times, the location, the GPS coordinates of the location, the radius of the location that you're going to fly, your personal cell phone number. So if you're flying, for example, and you're using your phone, you can't use your cell phone number because they need to be able to call you. And if they call you mid-flight and you're in a mapping mission, it's going to ruin your mission. So probably a good idea to not use your phone. It's probably even a good reminder for me too. Um, but I lost our iPad, so I need to claim that on my insurance. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, that's another, that's another <laughs> rabbit hole. Okay. Squirrel. So once you do all those things and you call in and you say location, GPS coordinates, radius, elevation, certificate number, here's my name, contact information, date that you want to do it, time period that you want to do it, and protocol for emergency communication if something does happen. What is the direct phone number that I need to call if something happens and I have a flyaway? That is important, okay? That's really, really important. Uh, then you need to get it in writing so that if you ever get questioned by police, you can show it to them and say, here's commander, blah, 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 here you go. 
And I have to say, I was very impressed at how easy the system was last time I did this, which was in, what is this month? October? Mm -hmm. Jeez. It was in August or September. I think it was in August. Okay, so, so. it was pretty recent. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. cool. I don't do a lot of drone jobs anymore because I'm trying to create a school that is the ultimate quality and everything that you need to know to go out and do jobs. Now, I still go do drone jobs in order to, you know, obviously remain relevant. Just keep fresh. Yeah. And keep fresh, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and this was for one of my clients. I only work for two or three clients, and this is for one of them, and um, that's how it happened. So Very cool. Yeah. So it's possible, but getting an authorization per se, you're not. is that not going to happen? Like, you're not going to get it through Lance or anything no, like that, No, not right? getting – that's a very good question. Oh, Rob, I love you. That is a very <laughs> good easy, question. Please. You cannot get these airports through Lance. So – Oh, man, such a good point. So I went on Skyward. I use Skyward desktop version um, just typically to put my plans through and everything. And it didn't have the airport on there. I'm like, why can't I get a Lance thing on there? Like, hmm. why is it not showing up? And it wasn't showing up because it wasn't Lance approved, which you're going to find with a lot of military bases are not Lance approved. Right. And they're not going to be probably, right? That's a good point. I mean, I, it'd be... My answer is speculative at best, but sure. I would say you're probably right. Right. So, but we'll see. Um, I didn't know a phone number. I just looked up on the website the airport uh, manager's office phone number, called there, went through a list of protocols, and went through the system. But once I got to the right guy, he knew exactly what information he wanted. And luckily, I was prepared. You should be prepared as well if you want to get access to it. And no, you cannot get access to these areas through Lance. Um, and that's any Lance provider, whether you're using Skyward or Kitty Hawk or uh, Rockwell Collins, um, which by the way, I'm pretty sure if you're trading stocks, in full disclosure, I own Raytheon stock now. Uh, I bought Raytheon because I think that they were trying to purchase Rockwell Collins, hmm. which would really take their commercial aviation space into civil. Interesting. Yeah. Might be more, is Rockwell Collins publicly traded? I'm not sure, actually. I didn't dig deep enough. That's really disappointing on my part. No, no, it's not. <laughs> I purchased the stock this morning, and it went through. I've already made five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a successful day. Yeah, if I wasn't trading, if I wasn't paying six ninety five per trade, it would be a great day. <laughs> it's, only, it's only day one. It could have gone the other way. Uh, anyway, stock advice from guys who shouldn't be giving it. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.